Hey everyone, this is Heidi with another knitting video tutorial. In this video, we are going to tackle Grandma's Simple Knit Slippers. These are worked flat with just a little bit of seaming to make these cute little booty slippers come together in no time. So in front of me here, I have worked all of the knitting that you're gonna need to do before you sew up these really easy to make slippers. As you can see by looking at what I've knit here, these slippers are made with just knit and purl stitches. You can see the garter stitch, which is knit every row, with a little ridge or two here, which is knit one, purl one, and then ribbing at this section, which is knit one, purl one, to form what's gonna be the toe of these little slippers. So these slippers, since they don't involve working in the round or anything like that, are super beginner friendly, plus they come together really quick. So let me show you how to finish these off to take them from this flat, kind of weirdly shaped, boxy, rectangly thing to a finished slipper like this one. So what we've got is a long tail at the beginning of our cast on of these. That's a big tip I have for you is to make sure to cast on with an extra long tail. And then when you finish, leave yourself an extra long tail to seam up these guys. So what we're gonna do is with our threaded tapestry, AKA yarn needle, we're gonna sweep each stitch off of our needle. And we're gonna do that knit wise so that they lay nicely in a circle. So we're gonna put the tapestry needle front to back through the first stitch as if we were to knit it. And then we just do that for every single stitch. And your needle's gonna get full really fast, so you can go ahead and let those stitches bunch up and thread onto that long tail that I was just talking about that is attached to our yarn needle. And we're gonna keep sweeping the stitches off. And if you're counting the number of stitches, you'll notice that I have a few fewer stitches than what the pattern calls for, but that's because I work these in a child size with a cast on of 23 stitches instead of 29. So FYI on that, and next what we're gonna do once we've got all those stitches swept off is draw the tail, the long tail, through all of these loops, and then we're gonna keep pulling on it like this and um, make sure that you know what the inside and the outside of your work is here. The outside is the side that has these ridges of stockinette among the three panels of garter stitching. So we're gonna pull this tight, 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 almost like you would finish a hat if you've ever used the pull tail through method for making a hat. And then what you're gonna do is fold the slipper in half, lining up the ribbing and garter stitch sections evenly. Then what you're going to do, and I'll do this quickly for demonstration's sake, but you're just going to sew the ribbing section closed, forming the toe of your slipper like so. So we're going to whip through these stitches, and I am using a whip stitch if you're familiar with hand sewing or embroidery terms. So whip stitch all the way down that ribbing section. And again, I'm doing this relatively quickly for demonstration's sake. So pardon me if my technique is imperfect. But one big tip is to keep your stitches lined up so that the section that you're sewing down on the ribbing ends where both of these garter it ridges end so then you don't end up with kind of a wonky, crooked slipper. So bring that around. Bring that around. And bring that around. All right. And then the toe of our slipper is formed right there. And I'm just gonna tuck the tail in for now, but when you make these for real, you'll wanna weave in that end to make sure that the toe of the slipper is secure. So what we're looking at here is your foot would go in the slipper like this, with this being the toe. That tightened up section we started with, and then that seam we just sewed to close off the ribbing section. But your slipper's also gonna need a heel, so that's where the long tail 
that we originally left with the cast on comes in. So we're going to thread our tapestry, aka yarn needle, one more time and line up those edges. And then we're going to sew down this side, again using a whip stitch like we did to form the toe to close up the back of our slipper. And just like before, I'm going to go relatively quickly, but make sure to keep your stitches lined up, particularly this stockinette ridge on both sides, to make sure you don't end up with a twist in your slipper, which makes the fit just a little bit uncomfortable, which nobody wants in a slipper because that kind of completely, completely defies the purpose of a slipper. So more whip stitching all the way down. And we're checking as we go to make sure that that stockinette stitch ridge here and here stays lined up. And if any of you have made slippers using this method, it might have been a first non-scarf knitting project for some of you, um, go ahead and let us know in the comments because I'd love to hear your tips and tricks for success on seaming these and also ideas for how to embellish them or um, add things like add things like pom-poms or tassels to really personalize them and help make them special for you or whoever you're gifting them to. So I've drawn that tail through and I'm going to draw it through one more time just to hide that tail so we can take a look at the finished pair of slippers. There we go. And now we've got our set of little slippers that I'll weave this tail in on shortly. And they kind of make me think of like one of the Muppets. Maybe it's just the color makes me think of Cookie Monster a little bit. And I did these in a kid size. But these little slippers are super easy and very beginner friendly. These easy to make slippers make great gifts for people of all ages. If you've got any questions or other ideas like I was asking for earlier for tips on pom-poms and other embellishments you can add to these guys, let us know in the comments and tune in again soon for more knitting videos.